but not all systems we need to we need to explicitly give the goals. There are some systems where the goal is uh, zero value. Many systems have zero value goals. Example is right here. You can assume radioactive decay. Uh, that is also a exponential system, exponential decay. Uh, the general structure is that we don't really explicitly specify the goal because the goal is anyway zero, so you don't need to explicitly define it. So the system becomes much more compact. So we have state of system S net outflow rate uh, is, is simply S times the fractional decay rate D. So your change in stock or net outflow rate is just stock times D. So uh, you don't need to subtract with the zero. So let's see what happens. And typically in these systems, we are interested in half life. For all, we can just go with the example also radioactive decay. We are interested in half life. Um, it's nothing but the time interval required to cut the discrepancy in half. Let us quickly uh, check that out. Zero, zero value goal. What we want to do is we have stock S, and they have a rate. And there is fractional adjustment or decay rate D. So let us uh, uh, decay fraction D. So the equation for this is uh, is equal to minus rate, right? Which is minus d into s because I am just reducing it. You can solve it similar to the way we solved for uh, exponential growth or the previous scenarios by you know, moving s to the other side and integrating. So, upon solving, we can get a nice expression for s at time t. Which is nothing but initial value t power minus t into d or s naught t power minus t by uh, same adjustment time. So, a t again stands for adjustment time, which is just 1 over the fraction d, this is an a. This curve as so we need to get a expression e power minus x so that we can get the curve similar to this. So, for all these systems, this is your S naught and this is your goal, right goal is 0. So, this is your S naught and this is your goal and let us assume we have a adjustment time, twice the adjustment time, 3 times adjustment time and so on. So, this is your time axis 80, 180, 380, etcetera. Scale, but let me just try one of So, this is a behavior expected because e power minus x function, I am just plotting that. So, one thing we are interested in this is we want to know when is the half life. So, we want to know at half point where I will reach this. So, let us uh, denote this as the half life t subscript h the time at which the stock value becomes 50 percent. We can it is quite straightforward to compute it half life Half life is when S of t is uh, 50 percent of your initial value. So, from the above equation, we get this is equal to e power minus uh, th. th by a t. So, once you solve it, we will get it is minus th by adjustment time is 
point five. So that means your adjustment time is nothing but point six nine three one and two adjustment time. As your half life is equal to about point six times your adjustment time. This will be very similar to your exponential doubling time. In fact, it will be exactly the same. So, exponential doubling time and your half life here, you get the same multiplier of 0 0.69 times your adjustment time. So, there is a required to cut your discrepancy in half. So, whether you are going to double or half, you just multiply by 0 0.69 or 0 0.7, you can just imagine it like a 70 percent rule. So, uh, after uh, 70 percent of time has passed, the stock value is uh, cuts into half or stock value doubles in case of exponential growth systems. So, now we have looked at positive feedback systems, then we looked at negative feedback system, then we looked at negative feedback system with uh, constant exogenous rate either an inflow or an outflow and then we had a zero value equal special case, but again negative feedback system. Now, it will be interesting to take it to the next step of natural question is what happens when both positive and negative feedback occurs in the same system. So, if you only look at one part of it that is if you just focus your attention on population and birth rate that we expect it to be exponential growth system. On the other side if you focus your attention on only population and death rate, we expect it to be a negative feedback system or a zero value goal system where system is the population is eventually going to die off. If there is no additional birth rate in system at some point system is going to die off. So, with death rate we are going to have a exponential decay with a zero value goal or with birth rate we are going to have a positive feedback system which results in exponential growth correct. So, now and birth rate is governed by fractional birth rate and death rate is governed by fractional death rate d. So, what are the possible patterns of behavior? Is there anything else? When both these values both these take values how do we expect the system to behave? Individually we know when both are there together both b and d are there then how will the system behave? Combined positive and negative feedbacks. We were looking at population model. That's with a fraction d. Births the fraction uh, B. Okay. So, the system we are looking at there are only three possible ways the system cannot oscillate, the system cannot uh, have produce an S shaped growth uh, because there is uh, nothing causing any other dynamics within the system. So, we just have two constants B and D. So, we are going to get only three modes of behavior uh, for your population. If in steady state when births e exactly equal deaths, then population will remain a constant. When with births will be equal to deaths, see here deaths the, the equation for deaths is nothing but deaths is equal to p into d, births is equal to p into b. The equation of births is just p into b, the equation of deaths is p into d. So, in the system if p is equal to p is equal to b, I am sorry d, d is equal to d, then system is going to not oscillate nothing system will always be in steady state as this. Now, if you have more births and deaths what will happen? 
it will be an exponentially increasing system. So, this when b is greater than d, b is less than d, in less births than deaths, then what will happen? It will decay with a zero value goal, right? It won't be a mirror image of this. Instead, you will get a behavior like this. This is when d is less than d, right? So this is your goal-seeking behavior, zero value goal. This is the shape we drew. That's what you'll get when deaths are more than births. The population is going to keep declining until it hits zero. If births are greater than deaths, it's going to have exponential growth. Births are equal to deaths, then you're going to get a constant rate. So it comes out because of this, the net rate, as opposed to the the level, if we plot it, the net rate in b equal to d case is constant. Sorry, this is constant line b equal to d it is constant. When b is greater than d, so again I am going to get a b is greater than d or b is b is less than d. So, if the slope is positive, I am going to get exponential growth. Slope is negative, then I have I have to get exponential uh, kind of a decay. And if uh, it's constant, I mean it is uh, equal, then I am going to get a linear growth. These are only three possible modes of uh, behavior within the system, right? And again, the system continues to be linear. And at any point, we just figure out which is dominating, and app appropriately we can compute the net rate. And if Suppose I know the value of b and value of d, I take the difference and depending on that I can figure out whether the system is going to increase or decrease and I can compute what is going to be for example, uh, doubling time or the uh, half time or half life rather, yeah. Level is the stock, p is the stock. Stock or level. Can we saw this like uh, let me just move this for positive feedback systems we had made a rate level chart I have shown you the slide. So, there the rate level chart was like this and we told that this slope here defined your growth rate g. For negative feedback systems, we also had a rate level chart where we drew it something like this, this direction. It went on the negative side also, if you remember. So, we are just drawing the same graph except that we are already taking the difference and uh, drawn it here, the same graph that we drew from that uh, same order point of origin, yeah and that is why the system continues to be linear, yeah. 